This is an electric motorcycle. That is a regenerative property. And over the next three days, Vaden, Brent, and I are challenging ourselves to see what regenerative agriculture can look like here in Alberta. Today is day one, and we're checking out Highfield Regenerative Farm, which is a brownfield urban site right in the heart of the city. We want to show you how amazing and productive regenerative farming spaces in the urban centers can be. A big piece of regenerative agriculture is recognizing that you yourself, you are part of that system. Look at a forest. Does anybody fertilize a forest? No, the forest takes care of itself. So what can we look at's going on in nature and how can we mimic that in our backyard or our back 40? So urban farming, instead of people going to the grocery store and not even understanding where their food came from, they actually can see it, they can touch it, they can help grow it. From there, we'll head north and visit a couple of regenerative farms in central Alberta. But first, let's get ready for the road. Brent. Good morning, gentlemen. How's it going? Great, how are you doing? That is a sweet ride. <laughs> what have we gotten ourselves into? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Full disclosure, Rob, I know very little about what we're doing in regenerative farming. <laughs> <laughs> I know very little about motorbikes. <laughs> <laughs> so, how much experience do you have? Almost none. Okay. But lots on bicycles. Okay. So this is a bit of a step up. Why don't you sit on it and we'll just see how it fits. Okay. Oh yeah, you can sit on it pretty good. You feel pretty good to go? I'll give it a try, yep. Okay, yeah, go. <laughs> Just joking. We're not gonna let you wreck a $15,000 bike yet. I got something else you can use. So what's the range on these, Brent? That one there will do about 150 kilometers. Uh, the big ones will go about 350. And where do you charge them? Uh, you can charge them just at home on a 110 or you can do a level two charging, which is at any of the stations that you go to. It takes about an hour and a half on a quick charge. Yeah. Um, and then at home, you're about six to eight hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is where you start all the this beginners This is where you then? start all the beginners, buddy. <laughs> you know how to ride a bicycle? Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> jump on. Right. Okay, throttle it. Ooh. Yeah. Look, he's can balance. There he goes. See, he knows guys. what he's doing. There he goes. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> okay, Rob, quit goofing around. Get over here, try the real deal. Seems a little more nervous on this than uh, the other one. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> nice and easy. Nice and easy. There you go. Look at him go. Oh, he's ready. Oh yeah. We're going on a tour, boys. <laughs> All right, buddy. How do you feel? That was amazing. Thank you for letting me ride that. You did awesome, man. I'm actually really impressed. <laughs> I didn't think you would do that great. <laughs> I so, thought it would be more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it cost to charge one of these things? On my bill at home, I'm probably charged another couple dollars per month, to be honest with you. It's very minuscule. And Baden, you grew up on uh, dirt bikes, hey? Yeah. So if you're used to driving traditional motorbikes or clutch motorbikes or dirt bikes, and then you get on this, it's almost like getting on a different animal altogether. It's the instantaneous torque that that drives the experience. It's crazy. And it makes you smile. It, well, look at see Yeah. yeah. I, I almost never smile. <laughs> we, <laughs> we know. know. <laughs> That's why we agreed to go on this. <laughs> So I think we're going to Highfield Farm next. I'm pretty stoked about what they're doing there. And cities are just full of these, these brownfield sites that get abandoned because of industrial or commercial use. So trying to find ways to put these properties to productive use is kind of interesting because you could solve a lot of problems for cities. And uh, I think that's kind of what they're trying to demonstrate. And if they can figure out this model, they want to kind of roll it out on other cities and things like that. It's urban-based agriculture. And it's really community-based too, where they're not only trying to do some form of regeneration of the ecosystem, but they're also trying to bring people together, like-minded people together, and generate some energy out of that. So here we are. Wow. Well, hey there. Hey, Heather. Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Highfield Farm. I'm the operations manager here and uh, we are running a project with the Compost Council of Canada and the City of Calgary. 
And we're transforming a 15 acre piece of brownfield property into an active farm site. It's a quite a big project and there's tons going on. So I'm super excited to have you here. And we're gonna start in the greenhouse. So we were able to put this building up uh, with a grant from Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. So we've got 50% grow space and 50% community gathering space. So oh, cool. oh. not only does this allow us to, you know, extend our season and even grow inside year round now. It's been a great learning opportunity here and a nice way for our volunteers to engage with a whole new side of growing that a lot of them don't have any experience with. Let's go back to the beginning. What, what was the start of Highfield? The original vision of the site was to activate this underutilized zone and bring it back to life specifically through urban agriculture with a focus on regenerative growing methods and soil health. All of the food that we grow on site is donated back to food access to uh, ensure that folks who don't tend to have access to fresh whole local foods can have that access. Nice. Heather, let's take a look at what you got growing in here. Yeah, for sure, let's check it out. Um, so these are more sensitive crops in the greenhouse space, the ones that really love that heat. We've got eggplants, we've got some tomatoes going. We've got our uh, cucumber plants all growing up the uh, supports. You guys have such a great template here now. Have you been approached by any other maybe cities or any other groups to kind of duplicate what you've done here and, and teach them a bit about it? Yeah, we're always talking with different organizations that are excited about starting their own greenhouse or starting their own composting. And a lot of folks are interested in the different aspects that we have going on and learning from us and taking those back to their, their own property, their own organization. Do you want to check out the rest of the site? Let's do it. Let's do see it. the garden? Yeah. Right now we're in our market garden space and we are not technically allowed to grow in the ground on this site. So we have a layer of mulch underneath the entire garden space. And then we built the beds on top of that layer using a mixture of topsoil and compost. And you'll notice we got lines all over the ground here. That's our water system. It's another interesting piece about farming on this particular site there's no running water whatsoever. So we fill these tanks up that are behind us here and we use a solar pump in the middle of the garden oh, to cool. pump through uh, a one quadrant at a time through the drip irrigation. We are growing a tons of different kinds of vegetables. And we got our volunteers out here today harvesting our garlic. There's a lot of people involved in a project like this, of this scale, and 98% of them are volunteers. So we really couldn't do it without them. Amazing, yeah. so good. All right, so let's go check out the Basil Ranch. Awesome. Welcome to Petals by Basil Ranch. Amazing. Hi, Vicky. Hey. Hello. How you doing? So Vicky, it's been a while since we've uh, hung out and this is amazing. Tell me what you've got going on here. So we've got a flower garden specifically for growing for chefs, uh, restaurants um, in particular, but we also do a few uh, cut flowers for bouquets. There's all these folks that are already doing amazing work. So just to have a, a space where we can make all these different connections and a lot of our grower members on site, they've started working together on different projects too. The really cool thing about being here as well is with the indoor production, any of the compost comes here right. and the compost club um, uses that. And so it's really cool how we can cycle through everything together. Yeah. And I also grow mushrooms indoor. That's so so cool. that substrate is an amendment for our soil. So cool. It's just a holistic system, right? Like a big piece of regenerative agriculture is recognizing that you yourself as the farmer is part of the system. You're not controlling the system. You're not outside of the system. You are part of that system. And the connection to each other and our relationship with one another is 
just it's such an important piece. And to speak to what Heather was saying, how has it been kind of interacting with the community? I mean, you've talked about the full cycle nature of the farm, but having all these other growers around you and other people, is that does that make the job more enjoyable? Absolutely. Yeah, I think community is integral in this kind of environment. People get sick, you know, people get hurt. So having a community around you um, when times are tough and when times are great, you get to celebrate with a bunch of friends, right? Yeah, it's, it's easy to talk about regenerating the soil, but there's also the whole human element that has to happen as well. It's neat to see the best of kind of farming and the best of city all in one space. Yeah. And uh, what you guys are creating is really awesome. So thanks so much for sharing some time and showing us what you've got going on here. That's Thank great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks, Vicky. Awesome. Hey, Jared, I didn't think I was going to catch you. Thanks well, hey. for meeting me here today. Hey, my pleasure. Yeah. How's it going? Good. So can you tell me a little bit about some of your biggest insights having run this project for a couple of years? Sure. The number one thing that I've seen as kind of the reason for what we're doing is basically the connection of people in the community with their food and with soil and compost and all that amazing stuff that, that nourishes us. So urban farming is kind of a growing trend and instead of people going to the grocery store and not even understanding where their food came from, they actually can see it, they can touch it, they can help grow it. That's really kind of what Highfield Farm's all about. And without the volunteers, this farm is just a piece of land. Right. So having as many people come out and are able to get involved, that's really the, the purpose, I think, of the urban farm system. You guys are doing some pretty neat things here with the Brownfield site. Do you see this being replicated in other cities, even across this city in multiple places? Yes, for sure. This kind of thing hasn't really been done a lot yet. And one of the main things that we had figured out at the beginning was that we wanted to create a model. We started to have some people reach out. We just uh, actually won an award at the Emerald Awards. Amazing. Uh, which was super exciting. And uh, that kind of really put us on the map, I think, locally in Alberta anyway. So we're hoping that that starts to bring a little bit more awareness for people to come and connect with us. How can people find out more about what is going on here? So highfieldfarm.ca. Uh, it has kind of everything on there. There's a newsletter. Uh, if you sign up for the newsletter, that's the best way to get involved. And then we also have lots of events throughout the year that we're trying to get people to come and connect with. It's just another pathway for them to find us totally. uh, with a little bit of fun. So yeah, highfieldfarm.ca. Thanks so much, Jer. We're gonna go check out some of the other projects on the site. Sounds great. All right. All right, folks. This is Chris. He's Chris. from the Compost Council of Canada. Uh, and yeah, we're here at the composting area. So he's gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on. Thanks, Heather. Thanks, Thanks Heather. for being here. Nice to meet you, Chris. Nice to meet you. So tell us a little bit about this area here, Chris. Yeah, so it's a great little area that we have set up for people in the group to go around and do some composting, try it, test out different mixtures and see what they can come up with. Can you tell me a little bit about the Compost Council of Canada? So the Compost Council of Canada helps uh, support um, high fuel farms. Yeah. Um, we're able to work with them to get the grant for the greenhouse and make sure that they're able to erect it, get it ready, get it going. How does Highfield Farm play into your overall strategy? Like, do you see these brownfield sites playing an important role in cities across the country? For sure, so you have a, a large parcel of land within the city limits that was not being used. And now you can see there's the greenhouse, there's a garden here, there's bees. So what are the main initiatives you guys are working on right now and, and what do you see happening in the next couple of years? Well, we're looking, you know, we're reducing the amount of organics going to landfills and making sure that we're having different options. We're having, you know, composting facilities, little organizations like this that can do outdoor windrowing, greenhouses and stuff like that. Can you take us through, start to finish, how a Johnson Sioux goes together? You can take just a pallet. Yep. You're going to have some uh, wired mesh. Yep. So what you want to do is screw the wired mesh to the base of the pallet. Yep. And then when you're building it, at the bottom, there's a couple holes that you have drilled. And then you have, oh, look at this, we've got props here. You're going to have a perforated pipe that you can stick right into the middle of it. And you have three, about four, three or four, depending on your size of your bin. Yep. And that's to keep the oxygen and water going into the organics. And then as you have it in there, you can build your, your mixture. Eventually you'll break it down and you'll get some compost out of it. 
Hey, Mike. Hey, morning, guys. How we doing? Yeah, good. Good, good. Mike. Howdy. So I know you've been working with compost for years now. Can you talk a little bit about the different compost styles and how you would use a Johnson Sioux style compost versus like a static versus like an actively managed compost that we were just talking about? Yeah, definitely. Compost is not compost is not compost. Yeah. So it depends on what style a method that you're using to make the compost and what's going in it mm. to make it. It'll all come down into the basis of what you're using it for. Yeah. But then what kind of microbe population you're going to have in there. And then there's, you know, probably less than a cubic meter in here. And so a farmer would look at this like this is fine for an urban situation. But a farmer would be like, what the heck am I going to do with a meter of compost? But how far can this material go if you use a, le a lever like compost extract or tea on a farm? Yeah, compost has been typically looked at as just an amendment to add to the soil to build organic matter. Yeah. And that's important, and that's part of that soil health process. Yeah. But the way that we want to look at really high-end compost, think of it as like taking a probiotic so that we reestablish the microbiome in our gut system. Mm -hmm. We can take good high-quality compost that's diverse in microbes and reintroduce those species to the, to the soil. So Mike, I got one more question for you. Do you drink compost tea in the morning? Oh, you better believe it. You want to go try some? Yeah. Let's go check it out. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chris. Nice to you, See you, brother. See you, buddy. So what do we got going on here, Mike? So this is your typical compost extract. So yeah. think of it as like a big tea bag. So we're taking that highly biological compost or worm castings. We've yeah. got the microbes in it. Yeah. We're putting it in the water. We bubble it so it's, it's they're getting that rolling boil. And as those air bubbles are coming through the tea bag, they're essentially ripping the biology, the microbes and those nutrients off and now suspending it in a liquid solution. So where are you spraying all of this stuff? We started kind of backyards and working with community gardens. We work a lot with my friends, the Leaf Ninjas, doing uh, naturalization and bank stabilization projects on the rivers. Just a normal homeowner like me could just come and just get this from you and spray it online. Yeah, people just come and you treat it like almost like filling up your gas tank. So come and get a 20 liter pail of extract and take it back to your backyard and give your plants a little microbial kick. Instead of focusing on feeding the plant, if we feed the soil, then the soil will feed the plant. Look at a forest. Does anybody fertilize a forest? No, the forest takes care of itself. So what can we look at what's going on in nature and how can we mimic that in our backyard or our back 40? Do you help farmers get set up with this stuff? That is something we're kind of moving into the next one, creating almost little brewing hubs. So if there's one farmer and he's chatting to a couple of his neighbors, maybe we just set one of these up at his Smart. and they brew for all of themselves. How has being part of Highfield Farm been important for Living Soil Solutions? Just the amount of relationships you get to build here. And, yeah. and um, instead of me always going out and, and doing networking and educating and stuff, it's so neat to bring people here. And, you know, and then even s simple stuff like this, like, you know, like Green, green Drop can't do that. So um, that's why your skin looks so nice. Yeah, right? Like, you know, I'm actually 75, right? So. Seeing you drink that stuff, I'm just wondering if there's a benefit to the zero bikes, maybe spraying the bikes with some compost. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, totally. So it could be some kind of new degreaser yeah. or something. Up some horsepower or torque. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking of making it go faster sure, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. Optimize totally. it. Yeah, it might just start growing some kind of mane or something. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, where can we uh, find out about what where you are and what you're doing and how can people get connected with you? Yeah, the website's livingsoil.ca and uh, Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff and YouTube is Living Soil Solutions. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. No problems. Thanks for coming by. Okay, where are we off now? So we're off to uh, Lee's pelletization rig in Sundry. He's got this pretty cool machine that he can used to amalgamate nutrients and I think even like compost and, and different seeds and things. And then he's got a, a no-till drill that he actually uses to put these things into the ground. So I'm excited to check all that out. Ooh. 
So we're heading towards our next destination, which is Sundry. And so we pulled over on the side of the highway, got the bikes out of the trailer and they're ready to rip. And we're gonna take the next 100 kilometers and see what these bikes can really do. So we're at Lee Martineau's ranch, just outside Sundry, sitting down with a meal, all prepared from the garden here at uh, Lee's place. Real lucky to be here. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Follow us here so you don't miss any future videos and extended clips. Stay tuned for episode two.